<clears throat> Thanks for dropping by for my daily devotions. And this is for March the 30th, 2023. We're going to look at Ephesians 6, Mark chapter 6, Psalm 119, 73 through 80. And then Lamentations chapter 5 tomorrow, we will jump into Ezekiel. And uh, I may do a little video to introduce Ezekiel at some point. It's a, it's a great prophet. Uh, a little bit complicated. One of the <clears throat> misunderstandings about biblical truth comes in the fifth chapter of Ephesians. And I, Ephesians uh, 5, 21 says this, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And that really begins the whole discussion of wives submitting to husbands and husbands loving their wives like Jesus loved the church. And that, that the point is that we submit to each other. And the way we submit is wives submit to their husbands as to the Lord. Husbands love their wives like Jesus loved the church. Folks, Jesus died for the church. He died on a cross for the church. The husband is called to love. The wife is called to submit and to, and to respect. The love is the harder part, believe me. Okay, let's take a minute and pray. Father, speak to us today. Address our lives with uh, the truth we find in your word. Change us from the inside out by the power of the Holy Spirit. According to the truth we find in your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 6. Start Philippians tomorrow. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, obey your earthly masters with respect and fear and with sincerity of heart, just as you would obey Christ. Obey them not only to win their favor when their eye is on you, but like slaves of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Serve wholeheartedly as if you were serving the Lord, not men, because you know that the Lord will reward everyone for whatever good he does, whether he is a slave or free. And masters, treat your slaves in the same way. Do not threaten them since you know that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you've done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith which with, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I can, so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. Tychicus, the dear brother and faithful servant of the Lord, will tell you everything so that you may also know how I am and what I'm doing. I'm sending him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage you. Peace to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with an undying love. That That is a great bit. The, the uh, armor of God stuff, so, so valuable for today. We need it big time. Mark chapter 6. Jesus left there and went to his hometown, accompanied by his disciples. When the Sabbath came, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him, that he even does miracles? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Jesus said to them, only in his hometown among his relatives and in his own house is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. We don't want to be where they were. We don't want God to be amazed at our lack of faith. We want to have trust in Jesus. 
Then Jesus went around teaching from village to village. Calling the twelve to him, he sent them out two by two and gave them authority over evil spirits. These were his instructions. Take nothing for your journey, for the journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in your belts. Wear sandals, but not an extra tunic. Uh, where, whenever you enter a house, stay there until you leave that town. And if that place will not welcome you or listen to you, shake the dust off your feet uh, when you leave as a testimony against them. They went out and preached that people should repent. We need to preach that today. People should repent. It doesn't work without repentance. It means you change your mind, change the direction of your life. You go from you being the boss or whoever to Jesus being the Lord, the boss of your life. It's repentance. They drove out many demons and anointed many with many sick people with oil and healed them. King Herod heard about this. For Jesus' name had become well known. Some were saying John the Baptist has been raised from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Others said he is Elijah. And still others claimed he is a prophet, like one of the prophets of long ago. But when Herod heard this, he said to John, the man I beheaded has been raised from the dead, for Herod himself had given orders to have John arrested, and he had him bound and put in prison. He did this because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, whom he had married. For John had been saying to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias nursed a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she was not able to, because Herod feared John and protected him, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man. When Her Herod heard John, he was greatly pu puzzled, yet he liked to listen to him. Finally, the opportune time came, and on, on his birthday, Herod gave a banquet for his high officials and military commanders and the leading men of Galilee. When the daughter of Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and his dinner guests, the king said to the girl, Ask me for anything you want, and I'll give it to you. And he promised her with an oath, Whatever you ask, I will give you up to half my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, What shall I ask for? The head of John the Baptist, she answered. At once the girl hurried into the king with the request, I want you to give me right now the head of John the Baptist on a platter. The king was greatly distressed because of his oaths and his dinner guests. He did not want to refuse her. So immediately he sent an executioner with orders to bring John's head. The man went, beheaded John in the prison, and brought back his head on a platter. He presented it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. On hearing of this, John's disciples came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The apostles gathered around Jesus uh, around Jesus, and reported to him all that they had done and taught. They'd been out on that mission, the twelve. Then, because so many were coming and going, they did not even have a chance to eat. He said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Guess what sheep without a shepherd need? They need teaching. That's what Jesus taught them. Still do today. By this time, it was late in the day, so his disciples came to him. This is a remote place, they said. And it's already very late. Send the people away so they can go to the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered, you give them something to eat. They said to him, well, that would take an eight months of a man's wages. Are we to go <clears throat> and spend that much to get bread to give to them to eat? How many loaves do you have? He asked, go and see. When they found out, they said five and two fish. Then Jesus directed them to have all the people sit down in groups on the green grass so they sat in groups of hundreds and fifties, taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he gave thanks, broke the loaves, then he gave them to the, his disciples to set before the people. He also divided the two fish among them. They all ate and were satisfied, and the disciples picked up 12 baskets full of broken pieces of bread and fish. The number of men who had eaten was 5,000. They didn't count women and children. It could have been 20,000 people there. So he, he fed up to 20,000 people with five biscuits and two sardines. That's how I like to say it. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to Bethsaida while he dismissed the crowd. After leaving them, he went up on a mountainside to pray. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the lake, and he was alone on land. He saw the disciples straining at the oars because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went out to them, walking on the lake. He was about to pass by them. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. 
They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them, and they, the wind died down, and they were completely amazed, for they had understood about it, the lows, for they had not understood about the lows, their hearts were hardened. When they crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout the whole region, carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And whenever he went into villages, towns, or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplace. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. Psalm 119, 73 through 80. Your hands made me and formed me. Give me understanding to learn your commands. May those who fear you rejoice when they see me, for I have put my hope in your word. I know, O Lord, that your laws are righteous, and in faithfulness you have afflicted me. May your unfailing love be my comfort according to your promise to your servant. Let your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. May the arrogant be put to shame for wronging me without cause, but I will meditate on your precepts. May those who fear you turn to me, those who understand your statutes. May my heart be blameless toward your decrees, that I may not be put to shame. In Lamentations chapter 5, again, we'll jump into Ezekiel tomorrow. Good old Ezekiel. Chapter 5, and this is the fifth kind of prayer of lamentation, pain, uh, uh, over the loss of Jerusalem in 586 D.C. Remember, O Lord, what has happened to us. Look and see our disgrace. Our inheritance has been turned over to aliens, our homes to foreigners. We've become orphans and fatherless, our mothers like widows. We must buy the water we drink. Our wood can, can, be, can be had only at a price. Those who pursue us are at our heels. We are weary and find no rest. We submitted to Egypt and Assyria to get enough bread. Our fathers sinned and are no more, and we bear their punishment. Slaves rule over us, and there is none to free us from their hands. We get our bread at the risk of our lives because of the sword in the desert. Our skin is hot as an oven, feverish from hunger. Women have been ravished in Zion, the virgins in the town of Judah. Princes have been hung up by their hands. Elders are shown no respect. Young men toil in the millstone, at the millstones. Boys stagger under loads of wood. The elders are gone from the city gate. The young men have stopped their music. Joy is gone from our hearts. Our dancing has turned to mourning. The crown has fallen from our head. Woe to us, for we have sinned. Because of this, our hearts are faint. Because of these things, our eyes grow dim. For Mount Zion, which lies desolate with jackals prowling over it, you, O Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. Why do you always forget us? Why do you forsake us so long? Restore us to yourself, O Lord, that we may return, renew our days as of old. Unless we have utterly, unless you have utterly rejected us, and are angry with us, are, are angry with us beyond measure. He wasn't. He would restore them, and he restores us when we're wounded. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. It is profound, Father, and I pray that you would uh, continue to speak to us every day, uh, um, apply it to our hearts with the power of the Holy Spirit, give us deep and abiding understanding to change our lives, God, from the inside out. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you. Have a great day.